Hey everyone, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well today guys, we're going to look at a couple of very special knives. Knives that were designed with the specific purpose of survival, evasion, rescue, and escape. Sear knives. Now right off the bat, someone may have looked at the title and said, hey, he's comparing a BK-10 to an SE-5. That's apples to oranges. Shouldn't he be um, comparing the BK-2, which is a quarter of inch thick steel like the SE-5, to the SE-5? Well, the answer is no. The reason I'm comparing the BK-10 to the SE-5 is these two knives were specifically designed by their makers for pilots who were down and would need a knife, again, for SEER, Survival, Evasion, Rescue, and Escape. If you go on Becker's website, and uh, or actually on YouTube, and read the interview, watch the interview with Ethan Becker, he will talk about how he designed the BK-10 specifically for SEER, for pilots who were down and possibly down behind enemy lines and they needed a stout survival knife that would keep them alive until they could be rescued. If you go on Essie's website and read the history of the SE5, you will find that it was designed with the exact same purpose in mind. Survival, evasion, rescue, and escape for down pilots again to to keep them alive until rescue. So what we're doing is we're taking two knives specifically designed for sear and uh, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So right off the bat I have two BK-10s, I have two um, SE-5s. Let's start with the sheaths. This is the SE-5 3D. That's the new G10 handles. I prefer them much more than the traditional handles because of the palm swell. Comes with a Kydex sheath with a metal clip on the back to clip it on your belt. Now I pulled the clip off mine and put a couple leather loops on the back so I could wear this scout style. But other than that, Kydex sheath is the same. Uh, this knife is completely stock with no changes whatsoever. This is just a um, factory SE5 3D. This is the factory sheath on the Becker BK-10. It's got a uh, kind of a, I'm not, plastic insert of a Kydex sheath, small pouch for you know, a fire starter or a sharpening tool. The only difference here on this one is I did change out the factory handles. They're kind of a smooth plastic, maybe Zytel. Um, I don't like them at all. I think they're way too slippery. So I did change out for G10 handles from the knife connection on this one, but the blade is completely factory. That is factory. All right. If you ask me, okay, I've worked with guys, uh, military guys and special forces guys. I've taken them up into the mountains, um, both retired and active military, and spent some time training with them and training them in uh, different aspects of survival and bushcraft. So if you ask me about the BK-10, about the SE5, what do I think of these as sear knives? Well, I would say they're both missing one important thing. I mean, they're great knives. They're, they're razor sharp, they're heavy duty, and as you'll see in a minute, they chop, they cut, they would make awesome self-defense knives. Uh, you know, I, I've done a video on the BK-10 before, as it came out being one of my most favorite knives but in my opinion to be a perfect you know five star uh, knife for sear 
they need to be able to make fire. Now, both of these knives, both the SE and the Becker BK-10, have a coating on them, and neither has a 90 degree spine. So they will not strike a ferro rod. They will not make fine shavings with the back of the knife. They will not spark on a rock to get a piece of char cloth going. A very important skill, a very important necessity in a sear situation could be fire. You know, you could be down in an area that uh, it's cold, it's snowy, it's rainy, and you need fire to stay alive. And yes, the survival kit has fire starting items, but still, you know, this is your heavy duty sear knife um, to keep you alive when you're in those situations. So I, I think my opinion, in order to make it a five star sear knife, it needs to be able to make fire. So with that in mind, let's take a look at these other two, Becker BK-10, SE-5. First of all, my personal taste, I customized heavy duty leather sheaths on danglers. That's the way I like to wear them, because when they're on my side, doesn't matter if it's left or right, it's easy. I can just tilt the blade, pull the knife out, put it away. I can fix it up to uh, wear on either side, um, wear off of a shoulder harness. There's all kinds of things you can do with this dangler setup. Secondly, I took both knives and I sent them to Mark at Sagebrush Customs. Now on the BK-10, uh, Mark made me a set of custom G-10 handles and that's what's on this Brecker right here. But more importantly, he put on a 90 degree spine and got rid of that black coating and put on a nice patina so the blade is still protected. But it will make sparks, it will make shavings and you're gonna see that in just a moment. The SC5, also sent to Mark. This is another model with the G10 handle. So I didn't need to do anything with the handles but, again, we got rid of that coating and put on a patina and a very sharp 90 degree spine, shavings, sparks. And to me, that makes the difference. We've gone from, my opinion, a four star sear knife to a five star sear knife. Let's demonstrate here. Just give you guys an idea. It's tucked away in my pocket somewhere <laughs> is my ferro rod along with a whole bunch of other goodies. All right. Start with the BK-10. Ninety degree spine. We have fire. SC5. Ninety degree spine. Again, we have fire. So, quick comparison side by side before we get into um, a little bit of demonstrating. Both knives have a blade that is about five and a half inches. SE is quarter inch thick. Becker is three sixteenths, but both are very heavy. Both come very sharp and I've kept these razor razor sharp. I use an ultra fine ceramic rod on both. Um, the one difference on the back end of the knife, on the SC5 of course, you got your glass breaker. This uh, back end on the BK-10 also has its own use and purposes too. Striking with the blunt end on either one would be skull shattering, literally. All right. Let's get down to some business, guys. How will these knives work? All right, if I'm down in a survival situation, probably one of the first things I'm gonna need is some shelter. Um, if I'm not in hostile territory, I'm gonna get shelter, I'm gonna get a fire going, 
so that people can find me and rescue me. Uh, hostile territory, I might have to reassess and do things completely different. But, so I need to get some fur bows, maybe. I need uh, shelter and there's not a lot of debris on the ground. I'm higher up in, in where there's more fur, not a lot of needles on the ground. So I need to get some bows. Well, how will these two knives work for delimbing? That's the uh, SC5, beautifully. Becker BK10. Again, beautifully. Both will get you shelter. Both will do some chopping. They're not big choppers, but they do chop. SC5, BK10. Both chop, both chop well enough for what needs to be done. They'll get the job done. But if I need to carve something, maybe I need to carve a trap. Maybe I need some uh, notches to help get my shelter up or something else. Well, both come with a nice edge, an edge that's easy to maintain in the field because they're both 1095 carbon steel. The Becker Crovan, which is very close to regular 1095, but doing something like pointing a stick, my, one of the first things you might want to do is make a spear. That's the Essie doing a fine job. Becker. Both will do the job carving. Let's make a notch or two in these. Let's see. I'll go ahead and use this one here. Put a uh, couple seven notches here. Start with the Becker. And, you know, they're not small bushcraft knives, so they're not going to be great at ultra-fine carving, but they will work in a survival situation very well. So, quick and easy like that. Get myself a seven notch. Do another one with the SE5. Again, we're just talking about a heavy duty knife. And that's one thing. You know what? I love my little bushcraft knives for carving. But you put me in a situation where I gotta be uh, uh, down, possibly behind enemy lines um, in a plane, in a crash plane or something, or a plane I've ejected from, 
and uh, I'm gonna, just going to feel a lot more comfortable with something like this that uh, is going to endure all of the, you know, ab abuse that it may have to suffer until rescue comes. So, bigger, heavier blade. Definitely for the purpose of sear. And just like the Becker, you know, big heavy knife, not as easy to carve with as a bushcraft knife, but doing something like some simple notches. It'll do it. Okay, so they'll chop, they'll carve. You saw them make sparks. Ninety degree spines now, remember. Got some fat wood here. You can use that spine to get fine shavings. See some of those shavings sitting up there on top. I'm just going to make a little pile here. So I just got just a little tiny pile of shavings from a piece of fat wood. And there you go. We have a knife that will make fire start to finish. Just hearing a lot of noise in the trees behind me that's why i keep turning around i'm pretty sure i got some squirrels running up and down the trees back here but i've had deer walk right up behind me and uh, walked into some big bull elk here recently too so i'm just kind of keeping an eye out to see what in case it isn't the squirrels making a lot of noise and there is something walking back there maybe we'll catch it on camera Okay, same thing with the Becker BK-10. New piece of fat wood here. 90 degree spine. Making fine scrapings. Nice one, different stick. This one's making the better scrapings. And again, well, there we go. Had to work at that one a little bit. But once again, we have start to finish fire and finally in case you would need to baton some wood for your fire everything's wet on the outside it's been raining both will baton wonderfully Let's 
make the first with the Becker. Firewood and with the SC5. All right, sear. We're talking serious business. We're not doing bushcraft. We're not even doing just regular wilderness survival, possibly. It could be the reason that you're down um, is because you're, you know, doing battle with the enemy. We're at war. You need a heavy-duty knife to get you through. I like the Becker BK-10 a lot. I like the SC-5 a lot. They both feel great in my hand. Uh, with a couple changes, as you saw, 90-degree spine, patina. Um, upgrading the handles on the Becker and even the SE5 I I don't care for the uh, regular handles these 3d handles are awesome and if I had one with a regular handle I'd change it out for um, some from the knife connection finally self-defense the Becker BK10 is lighter so it's going to be faster in the hand on the other side, the SC5 is heavier, so it's probably on a chopping motion versus a slash going to give you more penetration. Nice. Do I have a favorite? <laughs> Tough question. I've used them both a lot. Uh, I use them out here for various bushcraft tasks all the time. I've used them to start fires. I've, I've used them to uh, delimb, um, like I was earlier, chopping boughs, to cut cordage, to carve wood. Uh, I've batoned down fat wood on numerous occasions, some big fat pieces of fat wood. I like them both a lot. I really do. I can't say that I would choose one over the other uh, I guess my only you know the the real deciding factor for me that makes a big difference is this thumb ramp for me when I'm doing any kind of cutting or carving with the BK10 I don't have a real comfortable place to put my thumb. I don't like it up here. It makes my thumb feel like it's too far away from the cutting edge. Now I know you can remove the thumb ramp and I have not used one with the thumb ramp moved. That might change my mind. But that being said, and with the really nice palm swell and very aggressive, very aggressive texture of the handles on the new SE5 3D I would have to say I give the edge to the SE5, but that's just personal preference for the way it feels in my hand. As far as blade performance goes, everything that I just did, as far as I'm concerned, they did equally well. They batoned equally well. They started fires and made scrapings and things equally well. They delimbed the fur bows equally well. I just... Uh, you know, I, I you can't go wrong with either one. I would say if you're looking for a good heavy-duty survival knife, a sear-type knife, you can't go wrong with the Becker B10 or the SE5. My recommendation would be if you go with the SE5, get the new 3D handles, um, and then get yourself a 90-degree spine, get rid of that coating. BK10, I would... Uh, go through someone who can make you custom handles or the knife connection and get you some good G10 or micarta handles. I can't remember what I said earlier. Now, the other um, BK10 I showed you has handles from the knife connection. These are G10. The ones that Mark at Sagebrush 
uh, Sagebrush Customs made for me are micarta. I may have misspoken earlier, but I would definitely change out the handles and again, uh, get rid of the finish, put on a patina and a 90 degree spine so you have fire. Two awesome sear knives. You can't go wrong with either one. In fact, if you're into knives like I am, get both. <laughs> anyway, guys, Dan at Oshika Bushcraft, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, comparison of two awesome sear knives. Take care.